Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome as we join together in our Lord's house on this second Sunday after Pentecost. A great day to be joined together in this place that our God chooses to bless us through His Word and through His sacrifice. Second Sunday now of back worshiping here in the sanctuary with some guidelines as well. Um, but we're not actually having a worship service this morning, as hopefully already most of you know this is a recorded service. The actual service is going to take place today, this afternoon, at 4 o'clock, and we're gathering for the ordination service, a worship service for Eric Stacy. So we hope that as many people as possible can make that as well. So we're going to join in beginning our worship this morning by singing our opening hymn, hymn number 834. Thank mm -hmm. you. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, sin. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins. Lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. Called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord of all creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, guide us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Pentecost from, comes from Exodus, the 19th chapter. They set out from Rephidim, and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set them before them all these words the Lord had commanded. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading for this Sunday from the book of Romans. Paul says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely dare to die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, Death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This time, I invite you to remain standing as we have a unique privilege, saying that we have every Sunday to confess our faith, the faith held in common with all believers in heaven and on earth, and we do so this day with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God that his Father did for all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together is worship and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated as we join together this morning in singing our hymn of the day, hymn number 571.
mercy and peace be unto each and every one of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know as well as I do that throughout the history of the world there have been revolutions every time of history. In our own time within the last 300 years there's been the American Revolution, French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, the Chinese Cultural Revolution, and many more. And these are aimed primarily at political revolution. However, there are also social revolutions. And they started with the hope of instigating a complete new way of thinking about societal and social issues. Current protests across our nation echo this idea. Well, the word revelation itself, a revolution, I'm sorry, means to turn around. Therefore, the aim of any revolution is to bring about change, to turn things around with a view of making our lives better and more satisfying. You could say, out with the old and in with the new. Would you believe, then, that our God is looking for revolution in our own lives, and the life of the church and the life of society as a whole? And realistically, revolution is most needed in our relationships, our relationship with Jesus, with our loved ones, with our, our neighbors and our friends. A revolution is needed in our attitude to God's holy word, to worship, to the way that he commands us to go and preach, proclaim, and serve. A regeneration is required in our witness to the gospel, the sharing of the good news of Jesus Christ. We who have been redeemed and saved by his salvation urgently and joyfully going out into the world and proclaiming that very same love and forgiveness for all people. Well, even if you don't happen to remember, you and I know that the revolution in our lives began at our baptism. In those few seconds of water and word, God began something new and revolutionary in us. We were made new through receiving the, the forgiveness that Jesus won for us by his death and his resurrection. The Apostle Paul makes this point in the book of Romans. He says that in baptism we are joined to Jesus' death on the cross. It's as if we were nailed in a physical way with Jesus in that same place. In that way we shared in his death. The cross was where the power of sin was broken and destroyed. Think about it this way for a minute. After my baptism, I am to look upon my life as though I am no longer remotely connected to the old sinful me. That me which wants to put myself at the center of my little narrow world, always willing to push God to the side of things. It's interesting because in his second epistle to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul reminds us, hey, wait a minute, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Out with the old, in with the new. Out with our old sinful ways and in with the new life that's connected to Jesus. Because when you and I were baptized, a wonderful intimate relationship was established between Christ and us. By the way, did you know that in the New Testament, the expression in Christ or in union with Christ is used nearly 200 times to make the point that our lives are joined together with Jesus. It's th as though we were grafted into his body, which, taking into account Romans 6, that fits very well indeed. Jesus emphasizes this truth when he himself says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, 
and I in him will bear much fruit. You can do nothing without me. Makes perfect sense, right? Well, the implication of this intimate connection with Christ, it's really immense when you think about it. What's supposed to happen is by virtue of our baptism, Christ ought to direct our thoughts, our minds, his current concerns should be our concerns. We ought to seek to speak and think and act towards others just like Jesus did when he was here on this earth because we are one with him. Naturally, this applies, as Jesus himself says to our fellow church members who have been grafted into Christ with us, really more than anybody else. And you know, folks, this new revolutionary relationship, this new life in Christ that we have, it's found in the relationships that we have with others. Whether here at church, at home, or work, or school, or in your neighborhood. So realistically, it's a fantastic time, this second Sunday after Pentecost, to take stock and consider how well Christ in us is affecting those around us. For instance, as soon as we cause division, as soon as our mouth and our actions cause offense, and it doesn't matter what kind of justification we give for the thing that we said or did, we fail to let the love of Christ influence how we interact with those around us. For that very reason, we are faced continuously with regeneration and revolution. As God's law causes us to repent of our failures, because it is right there in front of our eyes, and thanks be to God, His gospel saves us. It's that very same gospel that you and I proclaim through word and deed that gives expression to the unity we have in Jesus Christ in our everyday lives. I suppose you could say that the implication is, oh, baptized child of God, now that you are joined with Jesus, you're in different company. You are in Christ's presence. You are in Christ's fellowship. Therefore, put off all things such as evil desire, greed, anger, slander, foul talk, and so forth. Instead, put on qualities like kindness, humility, patience, and a forgiving spirit. These are the qualities that belong in your new revolutionary life. These are the qualities that belong as we stand in Christ's presence. The others, they don't even remotely belong there. So in the same way that we daily drown our old flesh and our baptism, drown those evil things too. Because they are completely out of fashion for us to wear in the presence of Jesus. So again, we are faced with constant need for regeneration. Yes, we do love those, those old clothes. We love those pet sins so very much. Much the same way that we like a comfortable pair of slippers or a worn-in pair of jeans. Nevertheless, listen to what the Apostle Paul says on this matter. He says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Rather, present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Folks, we all know that to one degree or another, we do a terrible job of living a new life, as it were, and putting off the old. We fail at turning our lives around so that we might be like Christ, like the people who God actually made us in our baptism. That is why this revolution is a daily. Regeneration is a continuous event. Daily we repent, admitting that we are quite willing to resurrect our old ways. Daily we return to our baptism and are renewed and reoriented. 
thanks be to God, daily we are forgiven. And God's revolution continues. Brothers and sisters, be daily renewed through the love and forgiveness of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that you receive at your baptism. Be refreshed and strengthened as you receive the very body and blood of Jesus for the good of your eternal soul. Moreover, always remember, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Amen. And now may the peace of our God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for our prayers. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church, her witness of hope to the world and in every city, village, and home across the whole earth. The voice of the Lord may be heard through the faithful preaching and teaching of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who labor in the fields of the Lord today and for the Lord to raise up laborers for his harvest fields that the work may be blessed and they may be protected and defended against the enemies of the kingdom. We think especially in this day of Eric Stacy, who will be ordained later this afternoon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern this country and for the causes of peace and justice. We may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably and in accord with His Word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our Synod and Matthew, our President, for our congregations and our pastors, and also for the resources to accomplish what the Lord has given us to do despite all the obstacles and temptations. United in the faith, we may serve the Lord with joy. Lord, in your mercy, Pray for the sick that the Lord would grant them healing. For the wounded in spirit, the Lord would make them whole, and for the grieving that the Lord would comfort them. Especially this day, we think of Vicki Morrill, Bert, Big Sister Angela, Dick, Dorothea, George, Brooke, Ruby, Debbie, Vi, Molly, Jim, Brian, Jamie, Lucas, Max, Jane, Luella, Riona, Michael, Ethan, Irene, Roger, Helen, Pam, Ramona, Saul, those we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who come to the Lord's table this day that they may receive the Lord's body and blood true faith and rejoice in his gift of forgiveness, renewal of their life and the promise of the eternal peace to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To your hands of all, Almighty Father, we commit ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your everlasting mercy. Give it us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. And Father, hear us as we pray in your Son's name and as he speaks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Well, as I look at our worship folder for today, I think we have a couple of birthdays. Yep. And so let's sing blessings for them. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings, dear Andrew and Hannah. God's blessings to you. Okay. As I'm looking at our worship folder, trying to find other things that need to be identified for today, I see that we're having our church council meeting. At June 16th at 7th, we're going to plan and meet it to meet here at the church, but also have Zoom available for those who aren't able to make it in person. Um, of course, we have the ordination for Eric Stacy this afternoon, which is going to be terribly exciting. It's going to take place here at 4 o'clock, and it's something that uh, Eric and his family and our whole congregation have been looking forward to for a long time. I don't see any other announcements to make mention of at this very moment. So let us close our worship this day by joining in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 920. Thanks be to God. Amen.